In this video, we're gonna quickly show you how to make a graph in Google Sheets. Now, if something looks a little different when you do it, that might be because Google Sheets got updated, but if you look around, you'll probably find the same thing in a slightly different place. First thing you wanna do is enter all of your data, and then you want to highlight all of your data, and then you wanna go Insert Chart. Now, the start, there's not much we can do there, but we can go to the second tab, which is very useful. This is Charts. And then we want to click scatter and uh, keep that first option. And we want to click the third tab here, which is customize. So when we get here, we need to give this a title. Usually it's good to call it figure one if it's your first one. And then you want to have sort of a, an easy way is to go uh, using a versus statement. So usually it's your dependent variable versus your independent variable. So in this case of my example of time and distance, distance is my dependent, so I'll go distance versus time, which is my independent variable graph. So that's a, a simple way, and when you click away, it will show you a preview. I can change any of the settings in terms of the fonts if I want. Next thing I'm gonna look at is this little legend here. I don't really need that. It doesn't actually help with anything, so I'm gonna click none to clean up my graph a little bit. Everything is good now until the axes because my axes are unlabeled at this point. So I'm gonna start with the horizontal axis or the X axis and I'm gonna give it a title. So in this case, again, this is usually your deep or independent variable. So in this case, it's gonna be time and then you put in the units in seconds. And then I take a look at you know all of my data in terms of how it lines up with my X axis and I can see that some of my data is on the Y axis and on the edge. And we never want that to happen. So what I wanna do is I wanna change the scale so that the graph starts earlier than one. So I'll put that to zero. And that way my point over here isn't right on the Y axis. And then my max, I'm gonna keep at six. Six looks like it gives me a lot of space there. So I'm almost good. So I've entered that in. My next step is to get rid of these grid lines. I have to do this two different steps. So first that gets rid of those um, vertical lines. And now I'm going to focus on the Y axis or the left vertical axis. So I switch with that menu and I give this one a title. This is my dependent variable, in this case distance. Again, you wanna put the units in. So I click that, it adds it in. And then I take a look and see, well, are my points too close to the edge of the graph? And in this case, this one here is quite close. So I might add the max to be 8.5 instead. So there's some more space. And then if I wanted to, this one looks like there's a lot of space, but I might decide if I, if I need my graph to go to zero, then I'll add zero there. Um, that's something that you'll have to decide based on what you're doing. I still have a few grid lines left here, so this is how I get rid of the horizontal ones. And so now I have a nice clean graph. I can change the colors of my points and the size of my points if I like, uh, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna click insert, and now I have a graph that I can use. Now when you click here, there's also a few options that you can do. You can save the image. This is usually better than screenshotting and then you can insert that into any other document that you want. In the next series of videos, we're gonna look at how to add a trend line or a line of best fit and find an equation for that.